Hi everyone, this lesson is on what to avoid if you're taking pantoprazole or other proton pump inhibitors. So we're going to talk about certain dietary interactions, we'll also talk about different other medication interactions that can occur with pantoprazole use, and we're also going to talk about some herbal medications that can also interact with pantoprazole. So let's first talk about what pantoprazole is. So pantoprazole is also known as Protonix or Pantaloc. It is a medication used to treat gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. So it's used to treat acid reflux symptoms. It is a proton pump inhibitor or PPI. So it inhibits proton pumps or reduces action of proton pumps. And proton pumps are these pumps that are located in parietal cells in the stomach that pump H plus ion or hydrogen ion into the stomach to acidify the stomach. So this is what proton pumps do. And there are other PPIs, including omeprazole and isomeprazole. And because they inhibit these proton pumps, they act to inhibit H plus or hydrogen ion pumping into the stomach to acidify the stomach. So they actually reduce acidification. So again, H plus ions acidify the stomach. And because PPIs like pantoprazole inhibit those proton pumps, it reduces the acidification of the stomach. Now, pantoprazole use and other PPIs can cause a variety of side effects, including headaches and bowel habit changes like diarrhea and constipation, and other potential medical issues like gastrointestinal infections and osteoporosis. But the topic of this lesson is that certain factors can increase the risk of pantoprazole side effects, and we'll talk about those and why they increase the risk as we go through this lesson. Before we talk about those things that we should avoid when taking pantoprazole, let's first talk about how pantoprazole is metabolized. And in understanding how it's metabolized, we'll better understand why those things should be avoided. So pantoprazole is going to be metabolized in the liver, and it's going to be metabolized primarily by a certain enzyme in the liver known as CYP2C19. This is a cytochrome enzyme in the liver, and it will break down pantoprazole into metabolites. Now there is also another enzyme that can participate in metabolism of pantoprazole, but to more of a minor extent, and that enzyme is CYP3A4. So again, primarily the enzyme that's going to be metabolizing pantoprazole is going to be CYP2C19. Now in the general population, the half-life of pantoprazole is roughly one hour, meaning that levels of pantoprazole will be halved in one hour of time. However, there are some patients and especially certain patient populations that are more susceptible to what we call a CYP2C19 deficiency. So these would be considered slow or poor metabolizers. And in these patients, the half-life can range from 3.5 to 10 hours. So CYP2C19 deficiency patients account for roughly 3% of the general population in non-Asian populations, but we can see higher rates of CYP2C19 deficiency patients in East Asian populations more specifically, where they account for roughly 19% of the population. So those are some interesting points I want to make note of with regards to pantoprazole metabolism. Now let's talk about pantoprazole in our diet. Pantoprazole, like other PPIs, are used to treat acid reflux symptoms, and they're best administered an hour before eating. And one particular thing that may have some interaction with pantoprazole is grapefruit. And grapefruit can include grapefruits or grapefruit juice. And the reason that it can have some interaction with pantoprazole is because grapefruit inhibits CYP3A4 enzyme in the liver, reducing metabolism of pantoprazole. Now, again, we mentioned that CYP3A4 has only a minor effect on pantoprazole metabolism. So grapefruits are not going to have a substantial effect on pantoprazole metabolism, but it may have a very slight reduction in metabolism of pantoprazole, leading to slightly higher levels of pantoprazole than expected, which may increase side effects. And again, it's going to likely have a very mild effect. So some other things that can interact with pantoprazole includes cannabidiol or CBD. So CBD and pantoprazole can interact with each other to increase levels of one another. So if you're on pantoprazole and you take CBD, your CBD levels can actually stay higher for longer. Likewise, if you're taking CBD and you're on pantoprazole, your pantoprazole levels can stay higher for longer as well. This is because they both are metabolized via CYP2C19. So both are competing for metabolism via that enzyme. A herbal medication that can interact with pentoprazole is St. John's wort. So St. John's wort is a herbal medication that some patients will use to treat their anxiety and depressive symptoms and some other conditions like fibromyalgia. And when taking St. John's wort with pentoprazole, it appears that St. John's wort will reduce the effectiveness of pantoprazole through induction 
of CYP2C19 activity. So St. John's wort may actually activate CYP2C19 more and will actually lead to more metabolism of pentoprazole, leading to lower levels of pentoprazole. So patients may not get the reduction in acid reflux symptoms like they are expecting. Another herbal medication patients may use is rose hips. So rose hips can interact with pentoprazole, and it's more that the pentoprazole is going to reduce the levels of rose hips via increases in gastric pH. So again, because pentoprazole is a proton pump inhibitor, it's reducing the acidity in the stomach, meaning that the gastric pH increases. So because there's higher gastric pH, there can be issues with absorption of rose hips, so it can reduce the levels of rose hips. And we can also see interactions with certain medications like diuretics. So diuretics, especially diuretics like Lasix or furosemide, if they're used concurrently with pentoprazole, they can increase the risk of hypomagnesemia. So pentoprazole itself can cause hypomagnesemia in long-term users. So in patients who have taken pentoprazole for more than a year, they're at a higher risk for having hypomagnesemia. And if you're on diuretics, you're at an even higher risk for having hypomagnesemia. Hypomagnesemia is a low magnesium level in the blood. And some patients may actually develop signs and symptoms of hypomagnesemia, including seizures, tremors, and atrial fibrillation and other arrhythmias. We can also see interactions with pantoprazole and atorvastatin. So atorvastatin is a statin medication used to lower cholesterol levels. And concomitant use, so using atorvastatin with a PPI like esomeprazole more specifically, has been reported to increase levels of atorvastatin and increase the risk of myopathy and other side effects of atorvastatin. So myopathy is going to be severe muscle aches and pains, and being on esomeprazole along with taking atorvastatin can increase the likelihood of myopathy. And this may be due to some competitive metabolism via CYP3A4 enzyme. We can also see issues when taking levothyroxine. So levothyroxine is also known as Synthroid, and it's used to treat hypothyroidism, or a low thyroid level, or low thyroid functioning. And again, using it together with pantoprazole can lead to reduced absorption of levothyroxine, reducing serum levothyroxine levels. So because of the increased gastric pH, it's likely that there is some issue with breaking down and absorbing the Synthroid, and that would lead to lower serum levels of Synthroid or levothyroxine, leading to a reduced ability to treat the hypothyroidism, which may require a higher dose of Synthroid. We can also see interactions with antiplatelet medications. So antiplatelets are going to be used to treat hypocoagulable states, cardiovascular disease, and others. So some examples can include ASA or aspirin and clopidogrel or Plavix. So Using pantoprazole with aspirin can reduce the availability of aspirin and thus reduce the effectiveness of aspirin. And pantoprazole may, although there's some debate as to whether this occurs or not, pantoprazole may reduce the effectiveness of Plavix as well via CYP2C19. So again, seems that there is, again, some interaction with pantoprazole and antiplatelet medications. And in general, it seems that pantoprazole and other PPIs can reduce the effectiveness of antiplatelets, so that can be very important when treating some of these conditions we talked about. There are other important interactions with antifungal medications as well. So antifungals are used to treat fungal infections, and some examples include itraconazole and ketoconazole. So pantoprazole can actually significantly impact the activity of antifungals via pantoprazole-induced increases in gastric pH. So again, because the gastric pH increases due to the reduced acidity in the stomach, the absorption of antifungals may be impaired, and this can lead to reduced activity or reduced levels of antifungals. So we may not be able to treat fungal infections as effectively as we should. And then pantoprazole can also interact with antiretrovirals. Now, antiretrovirals are going to be used to treat HIV. So they're ART or antiretroviral therapy. Some examples include adazanavir, indinavir, and nelfinavir. And these can have significant interactions with pantoprazole. So pantoprazole can significantly reduce the levels of these medications, likely again through CYP2C19 suppression or impaired absorption. So ultimately, this will lead to reduced effectiveness of these medications. So because they're used to treat HIV, this can be a very important factor that we should look at when prescribing patients with pantoprazole and antiretrovirals. SSRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, can also interact with 
pantoprazole. SSRIs are used to treat depression and anxiety disorders. Medication that's going to more specifically interact with pantoprazole is going to be fluvoxamine or Luvox. And the reason is, is because fluvoxamine affects CYP2C19 metabolism, leading to higher levels of pantoprazole and ultimately higher risk of pantoprazole-related side effects. And we can also see issues with iron supplementation in patients who take pantoprazole as well. These, again, are used to treat iron deficiency. So some formulations include ferrous gluconate. Now, there's no significant interaction between pantoprazole and iron supplements, but pantoprazole can reduce the absorption of iron due to its effect on increasing gastric pH. And then we can also see issues with chemotherapies, especially the chemotherapies in the class of tyrosine kinase receptor inhibitors. These include medications like erlotinib, acalabrutinib, dasatinib and infagratinib. So pantoprazole use can lead to significantly reduced levels of these tyrosine kinase inhibitors, lowering their effectiveness. So this is going to be very important as well to look out for. And then heart medications can also interact with pantoprazole. These include digoxin and mevacamptin. So digoxin is used for arrhythmias and mevacamptin is used for obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Pantoprazole can interact with these medications to increase their levels significantly. So this can lead to increased risk of side effects associated with digoxin and mevacamptin. So that's important to also think about as well. If you want to learn about pantoprazole side effects, please check my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.